Hi, Nick Trojan from Mason Sales. Today, here in front of our SFT199 Superflow Tankless from IBC, and also our SFC199 Superflow Combi from IBC. As you can see, very easy, accessible. Um, only thing differs from the tankless to the combi is we also have a separate coil in there for our boiler to our domestic, right? And you can see that too by our boiler pump right inside there. But today we're actually gonna be going over how to clean and service your heat exchanger on your tankless or combi. Doesn't really matter which one you're doing, the process is gonna be the same. So first off, uh, units off, I'm gonna actually remove this Mullex connector and it comes right down, All right? So just pull that away. Next, I have my channel lock and I'm actually gonna loosen this nut on top of the gas pump. Underneath that, should be our orifice. So you got a natural gas or propane orifice. Make sure you capture that, don't lose it. Next, what I'm gonna do, I got a number six Allen and I'm actually gonna go around the whole outside and loosen each one of these Allen's, right? Because then what I'm gonna do is use my drill bit and I'm going to loosen them even further. Now there is a torque sequence for when we're gonna tighten these all back up, which I will display on this video. And all the links that I'm talking about products will be on the bottom of the comments page. So now with that being said, I have my drill bit here. They're all loosened and I'm actually gonna just come along all Now this is one of the big differentiators between our tankless and a lot of tankless out on the market is that we can actually service our heat exchanger very quick, quickly and effectively. All right? So as you see, I'm not speeding up the video or anything like that. I'm basically doing it in real time. set that up there grab that last one and you're seeing I'm holding the heat exchanger but the whole cover oh, actually comes straight away as you can see the inside there's the burner so I'm going to examine that I'm going to examine my refractor refractometry tree and uh, the bottom cover make sure everything's clean and look at everything inside once inside I'm going to just set that on uh, to itself I'm going to look at the heat exchanger I'm going to make sure that it's clean if it's not Axiom actually out there makes a product. Uh, they make a stainless steel and they make an all aluminum uh, heat exchanger cleaner. So this is actually our two-step process for our aluminum. It's our clean F9A and our clean F9B. So what you're gonna do is if you've seen this with any kind of residue on there or anything like that, I'm gonna spray this and then the second step right over there. And I'm gonna let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes. What do you do in the interim while you're waiting 15 to 20 minutes? Well, you could try to clean the water side of the heat exchanger with your uh, isolation valve kit and cycle tankless cleaner through that. And while you're doing that, you could also try to clean up this igniter up there. Now remember, when you do clean an igniter, use your dollar bill or like an SOS or Brillo pad. We don't want to use any kind of sandpaper emery cloth, right? Sandpaper, anything that's gritty actually starts and digs into that metal. And what we're doing is trying to read the flame rectification. So you're digging away at that and uh, allowing it not to be able to read it. The other thing is, is sandpaper emery cloth has silica. Silica is a form of glass. When that uh, igniter gets hot, you know, cause the burner's right back here at this point, it's gonna melt that silica and it's gonna encapsulate that igniter. So it's not gonna read flame rectification. So just mental note, Make sure you're just cleaning it with a, a non-gritty, uh, non basically nothing to take apart that or leave any kind of deposits on it. The other thing is, is when you are spraying that, you wanna be careful not to get anything on any of the other components. So what I recommend is taking a trash bag and putting it around the outside. Now I can spray it. And after I'm done with it spraying, I let it sit. If there's any other kind of hard deposit on there, IBC came out with this uh, stainless tool right here. It's a P917. I'll include that in the description below, but it basically gets into this labyrinth style design for the heat exchanger, right? So 
how, how it works is basically, you know, our burner transfers the heat right here and all the cold water is coming back right here. This is where most of the condensing is taking place. So this is gonna be your portion that's probably gonna get scaled up eventually. So you take this and you just slide it right into these passes and it makes it a lot easier to clean. So if you don't have one of these tools, I definitely recommend it, especially if your heat exchanger hasn't been cleaned in you know five, six years. Now everybody asks, how often do I need to clean my heat exchanger? Well, I recommend you uh, take a look at it after the unit's first birthday, right? And that way you can see, you know, if it's propane and you, maybe you didn't do a great job at your combustion analysis, or maybe there's some flue gas recirculation coming up, at least you're gonna notice it right then and there. Um, and that way you can ward it off, you can clean it, double check your combustion after because it was so dirty, or try to look at what is causing that contamination. Um, the next thing I wanna tell you is, you know, before we actually put this back together, this gasket can be reused. Um, and as you can see, I should be able to basically get my finger right in there and pull that all out. No, it's just a rope gasket, right? What I, might, what I might do is just take my fingers around there, make sure it's clean, make sure that it's free of nicks or any, any kind of cuts, abrasions, or anything like that. Now the biggest thing is, is you can see where that corner was, right? So that was a corner and that was a corner of the heat exchanger. So what I'm gonna do when I come back and put this in, I'm gonna take that corner and I'm gonna start it right in the middle. And now I'm just gonna roll that gasket back around the outside and all the way down. And you can just see it just goes right in there. So basically I just did a quarter turn with the gasket. And I might even lay this flat right like this. Go around that corner. Right back down there. All the way to the bottom. You want to have a nice good seat all the way around. pushed into that, uh, that channel. And as you can see, that is all right there, all the way around. So now after I'm done cleaning, I done rinsing off my uh, Axiom cleaner, I'm gonna replace the cover. I already have the igniter cleaned. I'm probably still cycling my uh, fluid through the water side to clean that portion of it. I'm just gonna bring my cover back on. We definitely have a certain torque spec with this. And again, like I said with uh, the drill bit, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna tighten to, I might not even use my drill bit to tighten them all down. I might just use my Allen key and get them right to there. As you can see, I get all those bolts back up there. In place. So it can't go away. So for the torque sequence, we're going to start up here at one. All right, we're going to go to number two down here. Again, like I said, you know, you could probably use your drill bit to shoulder, but you know, I just don't want people going hard at it. And uh, even though during the trainings, I use the drill bit all the time, um, just want to show what we'd prefer you to do. And that way nobody has any issues down the line. So this is number three hole right here. We go down to number four. Go up to five. Number 
Or if you had one of those ratcheting screwdrivers with the number six Allen on it, that would make a lot quicker method too. So there's number five. Now we gotta go to six. down to seven as you can see it was a little quicker with the drill but again if you had a ratcheting screwdriver I think you'd be all over it all right and to eight Nine and then ten. And I probably will speed through this part just so you don't have to sit here and watch me do it, but And there you have it. Very simple, very easy. No excuses not to clean the heat exchanger. Thank you.